Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I would like to make a video uh, to show you guys a few tips. Um, this tips especially for uh, players in the intermediate level, so uh, maybe single digit Q level players. Um, if you're struggling to beat uh, the down level players, the low down level players, um, I think a lot of times uh, what helps a lot is to have more options in your uh, early game repertoire. So today I would like to present a few tips that can quickly gain you a, an advantage in early game. So let's just start the board uh, with a the most standard, you know, opening, you know, and uh, black to sight. If you play in this black, probably you want to just play a small knight. Your opponent approaches, and then you like, oh well, let's just play the most standard uh, Joseki. And then your opponent plays the most classical uh, Joseki, right? So the first Joseki you probably learned as you started to learn Go is probably this Kosumi, or I place a two space extension. Uh, this is a, right, this is the textbook of the old time. Today, AI would tell you, well, you don't really need to play this Kosumi. You can just play somewhere else, like you can just Tanuki. Uh, that's obviously fine, because it's AI who said that. Uh, today, I'd like to present you a interesting variation that I recommend to all my viewers. Uh, you can definitely try this one out. Uh, this is playing for influence. White obviously needs to play the Kosumi here, right? So if white just hops out, then we come back. Now white does not have um, sufficient ice space to comfortably live. Right? White's going to have no problem whatsoever to live, but this is a lot, already a, a little bit painful to deal with. Um, and actually, if you really want to get out, probably the shape move is to play Kosumi, but that's not the topic for today. Uh, we'll say what if white plays correctly. Uh, if we play correctly, uh, you can Kosumi here. White blocks, and then we Hane on top. Uh, if your opponent follows up with the traditional Joseki, uh, we can Atari here, and then we can ladder the stone, right? So from the surface, this looks like just a old Joseki. Um, and back in the days, that's how professional players played. Um, so right now, white cannot run because uh, we can see the ladder. If you look at this diagonal, uh, this stone is just way too far from it. So that's very easy to read out. But what happens is that white can make use of a move here, right? That That's going to help out the, uh, the ladder here. So let's just say white plays out a move uh, that is threatening to run the ladder. This is usually what white does to compensate for this guy's loss uh, is to take a move on the outside. Back in the days, black would just capture and then that's the end of the Joseki. Now it's white's turn. Uh, but today I would like to recommend you uh, my understanding, right? So. AI would tell you, hey, the best move is to play at K6, right? This would give you the best win rate. Um, this is a very nice move, obviously. It expands block. In the meantime, kills white off. But uh, I suggest that you can play a little bit fancier. You can go a little bit further, right, than, than the textbook, the AI textbook, you can play here. This is actually what I played in one of my um, Fox 8 dang game and I actually won that game. Um, the reason I really like this move, and I think it will be really nice for my uh, viewers, is, is that this move exercise more influence towards white as well. So a lot of times, uh, I see a lot of players get into this situation of trying to invade and then they have a hard time invading and they're getting attacked and they're losing uh, territory here and there and then it's just a very uh, tough game moving on. So to prevent that from happening, we can directly take a move in the center, not only expand ourselves uh, tremendously, right? This move expands way more than the move at K6. It also kills off the ladder. In the meantime, this move is suppressing White's Moyo a lot more. 
So uh, this is my recommendation. Like this does it doesn't lose you uh, much win rate. The only concern is moves like this. What if white uh, pokes like this? If white pokes like this, you can just go back and take, right? Or you can fix like here, right? It's up to you how you want to fix it. Uh, if white keeps playing, then white is losing the momentum because now white is spending one more move up in the air uh, than black. So black can now just quickly switch I don't know how, how this is going to play out, but you know, something like this. Um, so what happens is that black is actually very flexible. Since white already spent an investment in the center, now black can uh, turn to territory now, right? Because we already have a corner here. These guys are generating like tiny points over here. Uh, they still have a lot of potential to build territory, for example, uh, you know this the side is still uh, Potential for black even if you know white has two stones that are destroying the potential over here So that's a very fancy move to play out in your game uh, that can really confuse your opponent and uh, That's actually uh, not a bad move according to AI and I really like it Obviously you can choose your style a hey, maybe I want to play a little bit further uh, maybe I want uh, a little bit more. Uh, I'm a more conservative player, so I'm just gonna play here. Uh, it's it's really up to you what uh, which move you choose, but anywhere around here is gonna be uh, not bad for black. So this is um, a really fancy thing that um, it, it's it's kind of like my own thing, I guess. It's it's like. Um, I played I played the moves like K6 a lot of times and I realized well why can't I extend this a little bit further right like like here so try that out in your game I think this move is going to help especially intermediate players a lot more than if the stone was at a K6 and likely uh, if your opponent is at an at a intermediate level it's very hard for him to find out a way to punish your uh, your j8 move in fact it's not it it's really not a bad move so uh, even the punish pun, punishment is probably gonna be one percent of your win rate which is really nothing right it doesn't really affect the game so that's my first recommendation uh, for you know for intermediate level players I think it's really fun um, to play something um, this cool and just as a side note, as white, uh, what the AI suggests is you actually play the N3 here. This back in the days would be criticized, but this, because AI came out, this is actually a really good move. Uh, that's the correct continuation, and then white should just play uh, Tanuki here. This is no problem though. White, uh, black can still follow up by building his own Moyo. Uh, this is still a fairly even game moving on from this point. But I think a lot of times you your opponent would just follow up the old textbook move. So that's my first uh, small tip for uh, my viewers. Uh, the second tip I want to say is whenever white approaches here, um, a lot of times we just play the small knight without thinking, right? Um, however, uh, you can also consider this move like this is a move that I you know, I, I introduced in my Joseki uh, lectures uh, Obviously white has a very annoying uh, You know AI created move uh, If you don't know how to deal with this move, you don't want to go into this uh, complication uh, the, the, By the way, these are covered in my uh, Joseki lectures, so you can go ahead and check it out but um since it's complicated, you can just choose to connect. White's next move is pl play a small knight. Uh, all we need to do is just to uh, not play the Kosumi at R3 because if you play here, this seems a little bit over concentrated and white is actually gaining an advantage here. So what you need to do is just to hop back and make extension. And if white plays here, we can just Nuki and then this is a perfectly uh, equal game. 
Uh, but if you know what to do, right, you can just kick here. This is actually very strong uh, for for block. But I want to talk about, you know, what if uh, your opponent attaches here, right? Um, so I, I've spent a lot of time talking about the small knight and then what if white attaches here. Uh, so before I introduce the, the, the tip for the, the jump defense, I actually want to cover a little bit about the background. So if, if white plays here, I recommend in my viewers to extend. This is what I usually play uh, in my own games on Fox 8 Dan. Um, so a lot of players, uh, including the 8 Dan's, would make the mistake of playing the Tiger's Mouth. Uh, the correct move is not the Tiger's Mouth here. It looks correct, but it's not. The correct move is for white to play the Tiger's Mouth on top. Black Ataris, white connects, and then black captures the stone. And here there's a very nice trap for black. Um, if white plays the Atari here, which a lot of players would actually play this, I've encountered this multiple times, but this is a bad move because it doesn't really accomplish much for white. Black is all connected, black has the territory, black can uh, go very fast and then just gain uh, territory uh, once again, and white is over concentrating here. The correct move is for white to hop back um, and this would be an equal position. So now black can also um, just start playing somewhere else. Right? So um, this is this was my recommendation. This was also covered in my Joseki, but I think I'll summarize this as my tip too, uh, is for you to extend here. I know a lot of players love to play the uh, standard Joseki like this. There's no problem with this, but you want something simple and solid uh, I really recommend uh, this. If your opponent plays the tiger's mouth, we can extend. Uh, our shape is very nice. Uh, there's no weakness. And and white needs another move because if you don't play, I can uh, I can start attack this group. So a lot of times uh, my opponent would just play a one space extension, which is fine. Or if my opponent loves to uh, build, he can also push up. This is also um, Fine, but but black is gonna gain a sente, and then he's free to play whatever he wants. He's uh, this is a very good shape. So uh, uh, later on, if you think uh, you know if, if you think you are under you know some sort of a danger, there's a jump over here that makes an eye space. Uh, there's a turn over here that increases your eye space in the corner to live. So your, your group is perfectly fine, right? So this is just some tips for um, intermediate level players. I really uh, love this move and I play this pretty much like 80% of time, unless I think uh, this move is not, uh, unless there's some special circumstances where this move is not so suitable. Uh, so that was my tip number two. My tip number three, real quick, is to really recommend my viewers to play more. Uh, this jump here. This is a lot less popular than Small Knight, but I think this is a very good move. Now, if your opponent plays this one, then you can use tip one, and then you can play out exactly the same thing I just said. If your opponent attaches, though, uh, we can haunt it here. And this is also a main variation, actually. Uh, just not many people actually know about it. Uh, the main variation is also for black to Atari here. Let's just quickly look at the main variation, right? So this would be the main variation. You can play out like this. Uh, this is also a very good shape. Uh, if your opponent, you know, uh, gets out, then later on our, um, if you really want to secure this group, right? You don't have to right now. But if you really want to make this your castle, your bastion, like no one can break in here, your move is to uh, play here. So that, you know, all this will belong to you. So that's, that's obviously a very legit variation. But today I want to present my recommendation is for you to play a very weird looking uh, tiger's mouth, right? Um, so what you want here is for your opponent to Atari here. This is a inaccurate move because after black connects and then white plays the tiger's mouth, black no longer need to play the extension at P4. 
Now Block is very fast here because now Block can just go ahead and, and uh, play a 3-3 for example. Uh, we play out the most standard Joseki. Now we can see that Block has one corner, two corners, and then there's like this group that's very secure. Because whenever, you know, say white forms a, a wall for whatever reasons um, over here, right? Like you think you're under uh, like danger, you can always go into the corner look for more ice space you can always play the small knight uh to secure the ice space right if white plays here we can just um capture the stone and we're pretty much alive right we're gonna ha have one eye we're gonna have two eyes over here so uh in terms of the absolute security this group is extremely strong and actually in this kind of situation you should just counter attack right so i'm just saying if ever uh you know this group goes under you know is is in some sort of danger you can capture the stone at at s3 so so that's a uh, my tip number three uh for you to try out the jump here a, a little bit more in your games uh just add a little bit of flavor uh add a little bit of fun and then you probably know a little bit more uh, than your opponent if you have watched this one as well as um if you if you're a fighter right like you can you can also kick here there's a lot of complex variations that i covered in my joseki lectures so um that's my tip number three uh is to play out is whenever your opponent plays out this you can think about uh, this variation uh, and then at this point you would just tanuki and then your opening speed is very fast like your development is extremely fast and white is seems uh, white is very solid but white is really slow here right it's all on the second line and my last tip uh, it's something that I have covered uh, but it's been so long so I want to sort of remind uh, my my viewers uh, because I think it's a really important um, tip so whenever you get pincer a lot of times what happens to single digit Q players even to like five down level players I'd say is that they think they don't have many options right they think the only option is to hop out or to play the 3-3 well these two are obviously the main variations um, most of the time I would play out uh, like this uh, as white but in some situations let's say for example um, in some situations like this let's say for example you, you really don't want to play um, you don't want to play here right because there's nothing wrong with playing here but then you have a very scary moyo to uh, to deal with uh, you can obviously use my invasion techniques covered in my invasion series uh, if you're interested in those but if you don't want to get into this right like this is this is really scary like blacks all black stones seem to be very coordinated uh, we're gaining a corner but now we have a very big problem to deal with um, to avoid this so uh, also when we look at well what if I want to break this this thing uh, the problem with you jumping out is Black's also going to jump out. And then all of a sudden, you don't have a way to make these two guys comfortable, right? This is how I would put it. A lot of uh, players in the single digit Q uh, level don't understand how to deal with this. these two guys. They don't have roots, right? That's the biggest problem. You play here, uh, sorry, you play here, Black is going to Kosumi. And he's just not quite alive. And then this stone is super annoying. Like you can't do anything about it. If you play here, black can play the one space extension. Still not alive. You play here, black just follows up. And then it looks like we're dancing the center. And then black is just gaining lots of territory. And actually, this is actually bad, right? Like as your feeling is telling you, uh, this is bad. Yeah, this is actually really bad because black is following the principles of attack. And it's gaining a lot of cash here. So maybe the correct variation is for you to a counter attack and then black hops out. But I mean, 
how easy it is it for you guys to manage a situation like this right this is very very difficult especially for single digit queue player um players so here what i would recommend uh is if you don't want to play 3 3 and then you don't know what's going on after hopping out here uh the third choice for you is to just tanuki right like you can you can just ignore this so so um when you ignore what, what happens is that black doesn't really have a way to um to punish this stone right like if black plays here then we can play out this really annoying attach and double honey and then if if ever white lives here this stone seems a little bit inefficient uh it seems like what happens is that black spend tons of moves here and then white is still able to get himself alive um that makes black's efforts kind of useless so black's most severe move is to play uh this kick but in which case we can just uh play out somewhere else we can play a two space extension right um but let's just say for uh, illustration purposes uh, if white just plays sorry if um, black kicks here and then white plays somewhere else and then black keeps going playing over here um, what happens is that at this point white actually has a very neat combination uh, to gain an advantage uh, that is for you to peep here this I talked about this but I think it's really important uh, for single digit Q level players to know this because can easily gain you at an advantage uh, black needs to block and then white plays here and then black needs to um, cut and then Atari black needs to answer all these three moves and now white is able to comfortably ex uh, extend himself um, this these three guys gonna help out the stone and there's a lot of coordination going on over here in the meantime Black does have a lot of territory here, but look at how many stones that Black has spent over here, right? So this is over concentration for Black and very efficient stones for White. And then these guys will definitely help you out. Um, it doesn't matter what it, it could you know, help you out, help you out in terms of um, living inside or escaping or just uh, eventually maybe gaining some territory. Uh, these these three guys I guarantee you that these three guys are gonna help out so Actually, if if the game plays out like this seems like black made, made no mistakes But actually blacks win rate uh, has fallen a little bit right after these exchanges so uh, That that would be my tip my final tip for on uh, this lecture uh, That is for you to tanuki here if you don't want to hop into 3-3 if you don't want to jump out you just want to um, you know play somewhere else this is totally fine whenever your opponent kicks and then play so now black spend three moves over here um and then we can use this combination to really annoy our opponent um and then give him a lot of over concentration here uh this would be a better game a slightly better position for white actually all right, so I hope you guys enjoy these tips. Try them out in your actual game, and I'm pretty sure you will um, find a difference in your early game. So uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't, uh, if you don't want to miss out on future videos. And I will see you guys next time.